S&P and the Nasdaq are up much more than the Dow. So there is some positive movement happening. But uh, we are indeed in an environment where, first, you can't really say that stocks are maybe more than 10 percent off fair value, even given low interest rates. Uh, and earnings season, look, it was almost a sigh of relief last week that sure. the banks had some decent numbers. But we're still talking about bouncing around zero earnings growth. So there are not a lot of other places for upside to sort of feed upon, even though, of course, a resolution on China or Brexit would be great. So what's your best recommendation right now in terms of positioning, whether it's within the U.S. or, or internationally for investors? I think it still makes sense to look domestically because, you know, the hair on Europe, I mean, even if all this stuff is solved, all of a sudden Germany's in recession. Right. And in the meantime, in emerging markets, you've got Hong Kong blowing up, Chile blowing up, and South Korea is in the toilet because they, they're having trouble with the China trade issue. Right. So if you're staying domestic, Domestically, there are a couple of opportunities to go a little bit risk on. Small caps have sort of woken up. It's on the value side they've woken up. We think that makes sense, although perhaps even more down the middle of the style box and a quality approach, in particular small cap stocks that have consistently grown their dividends is a great idea. Okay. Anything else you'd mention in there as well? Yeah. The other thing I would note is also we've know, we note that technology has started to turn around, and that's a lot of that has to do with the potential upside from the China trade deal. Hmm. But here I think you can look at um, some of the old school tech. You know, think about the techs that have, the, in, again, the consistent dividend growers in tech, they're there. And in addition to the potential upside from the China, uh, uh, benevolent resolution of the China trade right, deal, if that's what we get. there's another piece that people have forgotten about. We had this big, uh, we had this big corporate tax reduction, mm -hmm. and it's already almost in the rearview mirror. Sure. First principles of economics. That ultimately gets passed through in terms of price when you're in a competitive industry. You need a moat. You need differentiated product to be able to hold on to that tax break.